Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. And I'm 
Randolph and his brother Robin would be bright, would be up bright and eager to start slaughtering whatever animal um, they had, whether it was sheep, goats, cattle, and pig. pigs. Randolph grew older in his responsibilities to go and sell meat in the town with his pursuer, Tita, and Tor. At the early age of 20, he left Caribou and was off to Grenada. His early exposure to business made him very, very success, successful in everything he put his mind to. He was a great taxi driver, truck driver, farmer, and butcher. He was loved, and he was loved greatly by many. By the age of 25, Randolph was already married to Patricia Duncan and had four children. Previously, and continued to enlarge his family by having 15 kids in total. Randolph wanted everything he had to be a state, whether it was his house, cars, trucks, and even estates. Despite all this, Randolph was a very generous and giving man who would go out of his way to help and support anyone, even in bringing home strangers who would have gotten stranded on the airport, for that he knew, for that he knew people all over the world. <laughs> Randolph was best was best known as a man who enjoyed and loved me, soup and soup. There was never at any point one meat on the table. There was pork, beef, lamb, chicken for fish, lobster, and shrimp, not forgetting wild meat. There was never any part of animal that was not here. Randolph enjoyed meat so much that even in times of illness, he was still at for pork. One of his favorite snacks was in the cheese and crisps. Randolph left to mourn his mother Delia, brothers Patrick, better known as Robin, Benjamin, better known as Benji, in Grenada, and McDonald, better known as Francis, and sisters Margaret, better known as Martel, Mary, better known as Tita, Josephine, better known as Ethan, his children Trevor, Glenda, Yola, Tessa, Kathy Ann, better known as Ben, Lisa, Clyde, Wendy, Linda, Randy, Naomi, Alston, Alvin, Adrian, and Alvin. His grandchildren, Crystal, Terrell, Trevor, Nikki, Ariel, Emilio, Sophia, Sophia, Dalia, Travana, Janelle, Addison, Caden, Nathan, Kyle, Gabriel, Kiana, Elijah, Devon, Mary, Ava, Leon, and Laura. His great grandchildren, Camille, Taja, Ethan, and Sebastian. His eight nieces and nephews. In six hours, Sonia, Nikki, Ken, Mike, Sean, Javon, Tiffany, Chris, Chrissy, Donna, Kay, Donald, Maxie, Miles, and Kayla. His son in law, Javon, and William. His daughter in law, Vanessa, Kylie, and his wife, and Sisters in law are Dr. Wendy Marone, Donna Marone, Kathleen Nelson Marone. Brothers in law, are Donald Mark, Arlene Matson, better known as them. We are grateful for his life and positive impact on society. We have the insurance that he is with the Lord and this is what makes his loss bear.
In Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Randolph for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore in confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our brother Randolph. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us from home. Give us faith to see in death the gates of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on us, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For the descent Christ died in the day, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing of us. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away.
break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord.
John chapter 5, reading from verses 25. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will leave. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak now of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of our priests, Archdeacon Marshall and the Anglican Communion, our sympathy goes out to the family and friends of Mr. Randolph. We continue to pray that God will give you all strength and courage to continue to face the days, the weeks, and the months and the years without him. And as a church, we are here to pray for all those who can be prayers at this time. Psalm 30, and part of it, verse 5, remind us that the joy comes in the morning. And joy comes in the morning means that after we face our sorrows and struggles, there will be a time of joy. It is often hard to see light at the end of the tunnel. When we are in the midst of trials, when we are in the midst of loneliness, when we are in the midst of disappointments, but if we hold on to hope, we can trust that better days are ahead. The phrase joy come in the morning is found in the Bible in Psalm 30 and part of verse 5. It says, weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And so this verse is a reminder that our troubles are only temporary and that eventually we will experience joy again. No matter what we are going through in life, we can take comfort in knowing that joy comes in the morning. Family and friends, you may be grieving at that point. You may sorrow at that point. You're mourning at that point. But joy would come in the morning, as Psalm 30 reminds us. This verse is a reminder that no matter how dark our night may be, joy always comes in the morning. In Psalm 23, we read, even though we walk to the valley of the darkness, will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is another reminder, brothers and sisters, that no matter what we are facing in life, God is with us and will see us through to the other side. He never leaves us. He always stays with us. When we face difficulties and difficult times, it is important to remember that one day joy will come in the morning. No matter how dark our night may be, eventually the sun will shine. Eventually we will be happy again. And we will experience that joy. My friends, when Job was going through these incredible trials, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that, in the end, will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. 
how my heart yearned within me. Job knew, brothers and sisters, that even though he was experiencing great pain and suffering, he would one day see God and to be united with him. No matter what we are facing in life, we can have hope because joy comes in the morning. Family, no matter what you are going through at this point, Trevor Holland, Jesus is speaking and he would hold you, he would hold you all and you all would see joy in the morning. We may go through dark times, but eventually sun will rise and we will experience that joy again. When we wake up each day, brothers and sisters, we have a choice to make. We can either focus on the negative or we can choose to see the joy that comes with each new day. When the day has come, we could say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Or else we could say this is the day that I have made. I will be sad and negative in it. It is our choice when the day has come to claim the good things God has in store for us. What is that joy? To better understand what it means that joy comes in the morning. It is helpful to understand that the Bible means when it, is, when it talks about joy, joy is not the same as feeling happy. Joy is a deep-sitting happiness that comes from knowing God and His promises. When we know what God has in store for us, when we know that what God promised us, brothers and sisters, this should be a joy for each and every one of us. He promised he will never leave us, nor forsake us. It is an inner peace and contentment that comes from him. Psalm 1611 reminds us, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasure at your right hand. This verse shows that joy comes from being in God's presence. It is not based on our circumstances or what is happening around us. When we have joy, brothers and sisters, we can be content even the means of God time. When we have the joy, when we have Jesus, no matter what our circumstances may be at this time, we know, brothers and sisters, we'll have that joy. Philippians 4, 11, 12 reminds us, I have learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances, I know that it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, Paul had that experience, my friends. Both extreme, being well-fed and being hungry. And he had learned to be content in any and every situation in his life. We two brothers and sisters, we should be like Paul. No matter what our situation may be in life, we must be content because we know that joy will come in the morning. Amen. This is because his joy did not come from his circumstances. It came from knowing God. Paul knew God. So no matter what was his circumstances, he knew that God would see him through. Do we know God to see us through, brothers and sisters? Whatever situation we are in right now, when we have joy, we can face any, anything that comes our way. Because we know that God is with us and he will see us through. We don't need to worry about the future because we know who holds the future. We know who holds the future. Weeping may last for the night. 
It means that our sorrows are not, are only temporary. They may last for a while, but eventually they will come to an end. The night sometimes does not, does be very sad. In contrast, the morning is a time of hope and new beginning. When we see the new day, brothers and sisters, we should have that hope in Jesus Christ. And have everything in our mind that what we plan, what is good, that God will see us through. So when it says that weeping may last for the night, it means that our sorrows are only temporary. They may last for a while, but eventually they will come to an end. The sorrow, the loneliness that the family is feeling right now, one day it will come to an end. Just as the night is followed by the morning, so our sorrows, brothers and sisters, will be followed by joy. This does not mean that our trials will immediately come to an end. But it does mean that we can have hope because better days are coming. The Bible tells us that God is close to the brokenhearted. And he saved those who are crushed in spirit. And Isaiah 61 reminds us, To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like grass oak that the Lord has planted for his own glory. So when we are going through difficult times, my friends, while we are going through this loneliness right now, while we are mourning right now, we can take comfort. Family and friends, you can take comfort in knowing that God is with you and he will see you through to the other side. Even though our trials may last for a while, even though it lasts for a while, we can have hope because joy comes in the morning. We may wait for the night, but eventually the sun will rise and will experience great joy again. My friends, God always and He allows certain things to happen to us for a number of reasons. He let it happen so that we could draw near to Him. Sometimes we're far away from him. And it let things happen sometimes so that we could find our way back to him. He allows us to weep so that we will draw close to him. When we are going through difficult times, my friends, it is natural to turn to God for comfort and strength. He is the only one that could comfort us and strengthen us at this point. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. God is close to those who are hurting and he wants to help them. When we turn to God in our times of need, he will find that he is a great source of comfort and strength. Family, turn to God today. For the loneliness you are facing right now, the sadness, Turn to God, he will comfort and strengthen you all. Isaiah 41 10 reminds us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God will hold you with his righteous right hand. He will see you all through. God is with us, and he will help us. He will strengthen us, and he will never leave us. Alone. He wants you all to know and to rely on Him in this life. We will encounter many difficulties and hardship. This trial can cause us to feel overwhelmed and helpless. But when we turn to God, my friends, we will find that He is a great source of strength and comfort. And so the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through 
Christ who strengthens me. Family, what you are going through, God is saying that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Apostle Paul tells us that when we are weak, God is strong. He will give us the strength we need to get through anything. When we rely on God, we will find that He is a great source of strength and comfort. Psalm 41, 46 1 reminds us, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. God is always there for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We can always rely on Him to help us through whatever we are going through. No matter what difficulties we face in this life, we can always find hope in knowing that joy will come in the morning. We may weep for the night, but eventually the sun will rise and we will experience joy again. But my brothers and sisters, to experience this joy, we must have that personal relationship with God. Knowing Him and His promises, we must spend time in prayer and in His words and meditate on it. If we don't know Him, if we don't know it, the, the right time is now, brothers and sisters. Now is the right time to build that relationship or to start that relationship with God. When we do, we will begin to see things from His perspective. And this will help us to have joy even in the midst of difficult times. When we have Jesus in our life, when we have that relationship with him, brothers and sisters, no matter what comes our way, the difficult time, the hard time, we know that we have someone that would see us through. The difficult time that surround ourselves with positive people. When we're influenced by the people we spend time with, if we spend time with negative people, it is easy to become negative ourselves. But if we surround ourselves with positive people, we will find it easy to be positive and have joy in our lives. Today I'm encouraging us. I'm encouraging family and friends. No matter what you are going through at this point in time, the sadness, the loneliness, missing the father, the uncle, the brother, Jesus is saying to us at this point, no matter what it may be, weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we form our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life in what I say. Amen. We need or seek for our prayers and intercession.
something in part where we say farewell, our church farewell to Mr. Randall. Give rest to Christ your servant with your sins, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign of life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal from the earth, and the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and the dust shall return. All of us were done to the dust, yet if my grave we make our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give rest to Christ, your servant, with your saints. The sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. Let us commend our brother Randall to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Randall for sovereign Lord Christ of all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the name generates one God forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven.
Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A life revealed to you to the nation and to the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. is gloriously risen, giving light to those who, who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you into paradise may the angels lead you at your coming may the merits receive you and bring you into the holy city of Jerusalem Ask it in the house. <laughs> Four, how are you going to make it? Yeah, boy. Right. Yes, hi. You take me out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Brendan Blazer Joseph, or better known as Blazer Shopping Like Ariza. I just want to say condolences to the family and to all the persons who couldn't be here in person I just want to say I'm happy that you were here via the live stream and you got to see the funeral service of your uncle your brother your grandfather your grand uncle whatever he may have been to you you know you got to see his funeral service so this is where we will end the live have a blessed day and be strong you know, from what we heard, we can hear that he was a, a great man. Yes, we got you. <laughs> Lovely. Feel good? Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a blessed evening. We're signing out.